I think appropriately the brain is being recognized as a relevant battleground in non-small cell lung cancer. Um, it uh, occurs as a site of metastases in probably about 40% of people over the course of their lifetime with advanced disease. That's slightly higher for some time, so ALK may have a particular predisposition to the brain, so that may be pushing 50 or maybe even 60% over a lifetime instance. What, what has been disappointing in the past is this very common manifestation of the disease has meant that many patients have been excluded from clinical trials. We have some internal data that something like you know, one in five trials completely excludes you if you have any history of brain metastases. Many other trials will only allow you in if your brain metastases are completely treated and sterile. And sometimes, you know, we want to know if these new drugs have activity in the brain. And the only way we can find that out is to treat people who have deposits in the brain, who haven't had them irradiated, and see if there's a signal. And certainly, uh, we've been pushing in the last few years that they should really look at activity in the brain as a defined cohort in some very early phases of drug development. So uh, it's going to be an issue for every molecular subtype, even those which don't have a molecular subtype, so we're going to have to address it. There was a very interesting poster here on the activity of pembrolizumab, one of these immune therapies, uh, in its activity in brain metastases. There was earlier a great fear that if you produced an immune reaction in your brain that would be a really bad news. So many of the immunotherapy trials completely excluded, it, excluded anyone with any history of deposits in the brain, with no evidence whatsoever. And now uh, a small study led by Sarah Goldberg at, at Yale University has shown that you know you give a PD-1 antagonist and they're getting responses in the brain. So we need to wake up to this being um, a relevant battleground.